Hi, my name is Leanne Howe. I'm the Eidson Distinguished Professor at the University of Georgia, and I teach in the Department of English. Um, what have I been doing during the pandemic? In my case as a writer, I've been hunkered down writing and editing and sometimes pulling out my hair, uh, or worse yet, talking to myself. I'm kidding about that, but um, I'm happy to announce that I've published two new books, and they're both out this month. Famine Pots, the Choctaw Irish Gift Exchange, 1847 through the pres present, is published by Michigan State University Press. It's the story of the ravages of empire, famine, and removal. It's also the story of the Choctaw Nation's extraordinary gift uh, that my tribe sent Ireland in 1847. It's co-edited by that wonderful Irish scholar, Porig Kerwin, and me. The next new book out uh, is called when the light of the world was subdued, our songs came through. The Norton Anthology of Native Nations Poetry. It's edited by the wonderful U.S. Poet Laureate Joy Harjo, myself, and Jennifer Forrester. And Jennifer Forrester is coming to the University of Georgia September 24th. Uh, she will be reading from her collection bright raft in the after weather it's a wonderful book of poems so we're very excited to host her um so i'm going to read um a bit of two poems that are in the anthology and like i said there are more than 200 40 poems in this new anthology written by natives. So this is Fallen Leaves by Mary Cornelius Hartzorn. And she was born in 1910 and won a literary contest in 1829. And as a result of her essay, she was flown out to Hollywood to meet silent film stars Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks, and that was really something in 1929. This poem is called Fallen Leaves, an Indian Grandmother's Parable. Many times in my life I have heard the white sages, who are learned in the knowledge and lore of past ages, speak of my people with pity, say, gone is the hour of their dominion. By the strong wind of progress, there's power, like a rose past its brief time of blooming, lies shattered. Like the leaves of the oak tree, its people are scattered. This is the 81st autumn since I can remember, again, fall the leaves born in April and dead by December, riding the whimsied breeze zigzagging and whirling, coming to earth at last and slowly up curling, withered and sapless and brown into discarded fragments of what was life now dry, chattering parchments that crackle and rustle like an old woman's laughter. She's writing a little bit uh, in a forlorn style um, about what happened to American Indians. So I'm going to finish up with the poem uh, that's by me. It's called Noble Savage Sees a Therapist. Noble Savage. She's too intense for me and I feel nothing. No emotion. In fact, I'm off all females, even lost my lust for attacking white chicks. Pause. Therapist. He writes furiously on a yellow pad, but says nothing. Noble savage. People expect me to be strong, wise, stoic, without guilt. 
a man capable of a few symbolic acts. Ugh, is that what I'm supposed to say? Therapist. He continues writing furiously. Noble Savage. I don't feel like maiming, scalping, burning wagon trains. I'm developing hemorrhoids from riding bareback. It's an impossible role. The truth is I'm conflicted. I don't know who I am. What should I do, Doc? Therapist. I'm afraid we've run out of time. Let's take this up during our next visit. Thank you for listening.